This is a really interesting article that's put out by Ripple, and I think that there's some interesting things in it that are worth looking at, right? Three biggest challenges of rising interest rates on global banks. Cross-border trade is booming, and the payments volumes are already back to pre-pandemic levels. But increasingly, high interest rates in the United States and Europe could threaten this comeback story for global banks and their enterprise customers. In part one of a closer look at the border challenges imposed by rising interest rates, let's focus on the impact on banks. The IMF highlighted concerns in the recent Global Financial Stability Report and found that rising interest rates have increased risks for banks and non-bank financial intermediaries alike. These worries were echoed in Ripple's 2023 value report, in which one third of financial decision makers cited high interest rates as a top challenge for cross-border payments, right? So these thought leaders are basically concerned about how high the interest rates are when transferring money across borders. And if you also consider a lot of these countries are dealing with massive inflation, their exchange rates to the US dollar or British pound or whatever is even wider now. And that represents even more money and more cost, right? While the degree of impact may vary by country, depending on the regulations, currency, and the volume of transactions, one thing is certain, the traditional approach to cross-border payments is no longer sustainable. So they're gonna need new ways to do things, right? For global banks that depend on cross-border transaction volume, the implication of this new rate environment are profound. Ultimately, an efficient integrated payment solution is necessary to maintain longevity during economic turmoil. So it goes on to talk about the specific challenges to overall health of global bank interest rate, right? The rise of interest rate for the global banks. There's a shrinking customer portfolio, which basically talks about how people don't have any money. Uh, constrained credit, reduced liquidity. Again, another way of saying that no one has any money. Organizations are skint. U.S. banks have experienced this firsthand, already taking an unrealized investment asset losses of roughly $620 billion as the Federal Reserve has tightened monetary policy. A potential looming recession would only exacerbate the issue and further limit loan growth. Okay, so banks are running out of money. People are running out of money. Limited investments and economic growth. Again, if you don't have money, how are you going to invest? See, high interest rates can stifle investment activity and economic growth more broadly. Rather than invest in innovation and expansion, businesses facing elevated borrowing costs may be hesitant to widen operations or participate in cross-border trade. This can hamper economic growth and global payment volumes with negative consequences for the banks serving these sectors. With less available capital to invest, banks and financial institutions might then pull back on their own investments in emerging technology or new products. This can extend product development cycles and limit the availability of new products for customers, further cutting into revenue. A lack of investment and expansion also limits the bank's ability to tap growth from new customer segments like small and medium sized enterprises and those in emerging markets which are expected to outpace that of developed markets by 2024 just next year notably latin america shows considerable potential and the rapidly expanding tech industry particularly in the it outsourcing sector presents lucrative opportunities a lack of engagement in these emerging markets would logically cut into overall cross-border transaction volume and growth. The power of crypto enable payments. Crypto, basically, interest rates are rising, the cost of doing business cross-border has been skyrocketing, inflation, all of these problems that we're all experiencing worldwide is kind of accelerating the adoption of cryptocurrencies to solve these problems, right? A lot of us in the crypto world already understand that Bitcoin is the answer to this constant money printing and inflation crisis that we're seeing around the world, right? Crypto and blockchain could hold the key to thriving global banking systems amidst the evolving rate landscape by supercharging cross-border payments, boosting liquidity, and providing a source of much-needed growth into emerging markets. Blockchain-powered payment systems enable faster transactions, enhance global engagement, and represent an estimated 10 billion in cost savings for banks. That's another factor that's gonna push banks towards cryptocurrencies, especially payment dedicated ones like XRP is the billions of dollars that they're gonna save, all of which could attract new business 
and counterbalance the dangers of rising interest rates. Global finance leaders agree, citing faster payments and cost savings as the top two valued propositions for incorporating crypto into their cross-border payments business. This is why SWIFT is panicking as well, because at the moment, SWIFT can't provide this, right? The solution is with crypto. These advantages of speed and price can offset any fees banks might add to their cross-border products in response to rate increases, helping retain or even attract customers that might otherwise defect. Modern payment technology can unlock capital that would normally be trapped in pre-funded accounts, helping enhance liquidity levels constrained by more expensive credit. The simpler, more efficient international transactions could help sustain our open corridors and payment flows into and out of emerging markets would be restricted if banks respond to rising rates by pulling back on investments and growth. Corporate treasury management is one of the such areas that stands to gain from payments stacked enhanced by blockchain. Around the clock access to global payments rails affords greater operational flexibility and agility for financial institutions and businesses alike. This relieves the finance and treasury function of a variety of different burdens they face using legacy solutions like Swift, including wire cut-off times, holidays, and banking hours, all of which makes traditional cross-border payments a complex labyrinth to navigate. Ripple solutions make it easy for banks to capitalize on all of these advantages conferred by blockchain-powered cross-border payments. Ripple's global payments network represents 90% of the FX market. 90%. So banks and their customers have a plug-and-play way to engage in emerging markets and new corridors and focus on gaining competitive advantage amidst an unsteady global economy. So as you can see, this is a worldwide problem. The interest rates are rising, the cost of moving money across countries is rising, inflation, exchange rate, all of these things are putting pressure on these thought leaders, especially in Asia and South America, to embrace alternatives like XRP and other cryptocurrencies. A lot of them are working with Ethereum-based solutions, Solana-based solutions. We're only one Solana outage away from them rethinking that, I think. And when the gas fees kick in, they're going to understand that XRP is the way to go. Not financial advice. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.